Welcome back to WCB Jazz Vinyl. So a quick update, just a couple of things before we get into the topic at hand. So the first thing is that there's a little bit of an update on my turntable journey um, where actually the P3 that I had been borrowing and sort of testing and determining if I liked it well, I ended up giving that back to the uh, to the person who was, uh, who was selling it because I'm not gonna go that direction. I'm gonna make a whole video just focused on all of the learnings that I've had and the direction that I'm going. I'm actually pretty close to buying a turntable, possibly in the next few days. So I'm very excited about that. So second thing, and also related, I have my uh, next round of 100 jazz records that are up on eBay. I'm gonna uh, drop a link in the, uh, in the description to my eBay store so you can go check that out. I believe that I started them on Wednesday of this week, which means they're going through Wednesday of next week. This is part of my journey towards buying this turntable. I'm probably gonna end up buying it before I finish all the, uh, before I finish the auctions. But, um, but anyway, the fourth round is up. There is gonna be a fifth round, and that fifth round I think is probably gonna be the most exciting, but we'll see. I'm still trying to gather what I'm gonna have included in that. So, so that's one thing. Um, second thing that I wanted to bring up before we, uh, or the, actually the last thing I wanna bring up before we get into the, uh, the topic at hand is this title. So um, Anthony Williams' Lifetime came out on Tone Poet, and I already have an original but I was hearing such great things about this album and it doesn't disappoint. And so I am gonna do a shootout of this because I just think that this is one of the most exciting Tone Poet releases that has, uh, has, has, been, has come out this year, or at least in recent, uh, in recent memory. It's one of the best sounding, so I definitely wanted to dive into that. And, um, and, and then today, so what are we talking about today? Well, I do have another record store day, kind of preview, review, sort of video for you. And the, the focus today is gonna be on Sonny Rollins' uh, box set, Freedom Weaver. This is a four LP set. So that's gonna be the primary topic of this video. And as always, before we uh, dive in, um, hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Instagram if that's the sort of thing that interests you. And, um, and yeah, let's get started. All right, so here it is, Freedom Weaver, the 1959 European tour recordings by Sonny Rollins. This is being put out by Resonance Records for Record Store Day. Again, four LP set, 180 gram. I believe all of this is in mono. Um, and again, 1959, and a lot of it's for, um, you know, was recorded for radio, so I suppose that makes sense. So uh, these, these sessions were uh, mastered by, let's see, Bernie Grunman, pressed at Le Vinylist, um, and this includes recordings from, again, it's 1959, but it includes recordings from Sweden, from Switzerland, Germany, Holland, and France, made between February 21st and March 11th of 1959. All of this, all of this content is Sonny Rollins in a trio format, but there's a couple of different formats. So, similar to what Sonny Rollins was doing with Way Out West, which was a contemporary release, contemporary records release, um, he also had his Village Vanguard recordings for Blue Note, which, by the way, we're getting that Tone Poet box set coming out very soon. So get ready for a ton of, uh, of Rollins live content. And then Freedom Suite. So why I, why I bring up these three things, right? These three different, uh, the, the Vanguard and Way Out West and Freedom Suite, is this is Sonny Rollins experimenting with a trio format and no piano. So it's just saxophone, bass, and drums. On these sessions here, we have Henry Grimes on bass throughout. So Henry Grimes stuck with him on the tour for the entire time, but there's three different drummers. So we have Joe Harris, Pete LaRocca, and Kenny Clark. So um, how that kind of um, how that's kind of spaced out, I guess, across that is that Joe Harris is actually only on three tracks. Pete LaRocca is on like 20 of them, and then Kenny Clark is on three tracks as well. But actually, those three that Kenny Clark are on are the um, are like full side tracks. So actually, even though he's only on three, there's a ton of him drumming on this uh, on this record or on these records. And again, no piano. So um, you know why? I guess why three drummers and one bassist? Well, Rollins famously had very high standards. Standards. I'd actually encourage everyone to read the recent biography by Aidan Levy or Levy uh, for more on on exactly what I mean by him having high standards. Um, but basically, he he cycled through drummers um, pretty regularly and and typically not because of just their availability, more because he would basically be firing them. So even just on this short tour, uh, he went through three drummers because he wasn't uh, well, he wasn't happy with them. Um, so. So what this content is um, and, and why it's being put together in this set. So this is live performances across both live concert format, but then there's also radio studio format 
uh, on here. And then there's like a two minute interview. So that's kind of what this is. It's like bigger sort of venue, like live concert, you know, in front of an audience kind of stuff. But then there's also these like radio studio formats. And this is a really important thing to know about these recordings, mostly because the audio quality is quite a bit different between these two formats. It's also important to know that the source content for the radio recordings are still seemingly master tapes and not like real to real recordings of a radio broadcast. So I guess to, to say that differently, you aren't hearing it after it's broadcast. You're hearing it like it's a studio recording. It just so happens that the studio is a radio station studio. So it's kind of weird because when you see this and you see European tour recordings, you think, oh, it's all just, it's all gonna be like live concert hall stuff in front of an audience. That is not at all the case. That's not at all the case. So there's, there's 11 tracks here that are recorded in a radio studio. And then there's like 15 of them that are in a live concert venue but not all of those live concert venue ones are even in front of an audience. Some of them are like, it, it felt like they were being recorded for, for TV. So it's just, when I read it now and it says European tour recordings, it makes way more sense. It's just me going in, I thought it was all gonna be live. Um, so um, so yeah, like, like I said, there is an interview here um, as well and that kind of adds some interest. Sonny Rollins introduces the radio studio tracks himself as well as I think some of the, two, the TV recording stuff, which is fun. Um, and, and in terms of the actual tracks that are across this, because I know a lot of times whenever you get a large box set like this, there's, uh, you know, people ask like, is the repetition of tracks, right? And here there is, there is some. So there's, there's four versions of the composition. I've told every little star. Two of them are, are like a radio studio format and two of them are concert format. Um, and they range in terms of, uh, in terms of the time that, uh, you know, like, how, how like the duration of those tracks. There's also two versions of Olio, both radio uh, studio, two of It Don't Mean a Thing, the actual, both, excuse me, both of those are actually live concert. And then there's two of I Want to Be Happy with her, which are both, which are both live concert. And then there's two of Paul's Pal, one radio, one live. Can't even talk today. Um, and the final three tracks, and I mentioned this already that Kenny Clark was on these like three long format tracks. Well, um, those final three tracks that take up the last three sides, you know, so one per side, are between 16 and 19 minutes. So again, full side length, extended things where Rollins really blows for a while. All right, so incidentally, um, you know, I showed you the front of this, here's the back. And there actually is a really helpful booklet, as is typical with these, um, you know, resonance and elemental releases, right? So there's this uh, this pretty hefty booklet. Actually, has an interview with uh, Sonny Rollins from like very recent about this about this tour, which is just ama amazing that we still have Rollins with us. It's uh, it's absolutely amazing. So um, I had questions though after having all of this information that I just ran down, right? Because all that information is not specific to the music. Um, that's kind of stuff that I was able to be like, all right, what is this? Like trying to process exactly what this box set is. Um, so I had questions. The first is, how's the audio, audio quality, especially as it relates to the studio versus the concert stuff? Again, the radio studio versus like concert venue stuff. Sometimes in, an, in front of an audience, sometimes not in front of an audience. And then after that, so after the audio quality issue, um, how is this recording just like overall? Like, is this, is this new sort of material? I mean, it's new material, but is this like needed? Is it important enough to warrant a release? That kind of thing. So those are the, those are the two things that I want to, uh, to cover for the rest of this hopefully short discussion. And the first thing that, I'm gonna, that I want to address is the audio quality. So as I've established, there's a variety of different formats. There's a variety of different venues, different countries that this stuff was, was recorded in front of. And each of those different, each of those things sound different. They're very, very different. So, um, so let's, let's kind of start from the beginning or basically the beginning. So the first LP has seven radio studio recordings that were made in Stockholm, okay? Plus one live track from a concert in Sweden. And that live track actually occurs up front. Now the radio station studio recordings sound excellent. Like super quiet, not like the most detail I've ever heard in my life, but a really solid recording. All the instruments are like dynamic and audible and it's well balanced. It sounds every bit as good as a studio album, which again was a surprise because I was expecting 
live all across the way and instead it sounds like a studio album which i think is just great now maybe not a rudy van gelder recorded studio album but there's nothing lacking in any real discernible way it just sounds really good like when there's a bass solo it's dead silent otherwise um, there's no sonic elements because of say the room that it was recorded in so it's a relatively neutral space in that regard um, so this really comes across in terms of at least this first LP, like disc one, as basically a 42 minute studio recording plus a seven minute live track. Now that live track, that again is track one, is not the best recording by contrast. Um, Sonny's tone sounds weird. It's like either flat or like wavering a little bit, like there may be something wrong with the original recording. Um, it is a little bit of a curious way to open up this box set because they could have just not included it and they could have started with that radio studio, but they did include it. And, um, you know, I suppose it's part of the recordings that they collectively have associated with this tour. So for me, I actually really love this first LP of the four discs and actually it's also my favorite of the four discs and the reason i think it's my favorite i'll, I'll get into that too um then the reason is because because it just sounds so clean like every all like the, almost the entire recording except for that first track just sounds so clean just like a studio album all right so the second lp this one begins with a tv interview that sonny rollins did for swedish television now the interview as well as the rest of the side was recorded in a 19th century theater and um, in, in basically what they do during this interview is they only ask him like two or three questions and then they also translate it for the TV audience. Um, but it's, it's kind of a fun inclusion and it really just sets up the music that again, he plays in that very same venue. So think about if you're watching like a TV broadcast and there's the interviewer there asking him a couple of questions and Sonny's holding his horn and he's ready to play, ask him a couple of questions and then he starts playing with his, uh, with his group. So side A of, this, of, uh, of the second disc is all in this theater venue and it actually isn't clear that there's a live audience there at all so there's no applause or anything like that so so i think in some ways it still kind of comes across as a little bit more of a studio type performance except that the venue except the venue like the venue is definitely not a studio it doesn't do it doesn't do him any favors so the venue adds a bit of echo the instruments are definitely a bit less audible in the mix especially drums and, and this is in comparison with disc one like you can tell that this one is in some type of live type of format um, I think that they probably are recording here with a single microphone and the drums are set up just further away from the microphone to sort of have some, you know, kind of like artificial balance. So, you know, if everybody isn't mic'd individually, then you push the drums further away so that they're less audible, which is kind of like how a lot of live uh, venues are anyway. Um, something that I find interesting in this disc two performance is that it was actually recorded the same day as the radio sessions on the first LP. It's just here you get a sense of what that recording sounds like in these very different venues. Um, the last track here is recorded um, is, at this venue is, uh, is called Love Letters. Uh, which opens with like an extended solo by Rollins alone and then the bass enters. And this is probably the nicest sounding recording that they did at that venue because it's that starker format and, and because you don't feel like you're losing as much with a um, sort of difference in balance between the, uh, the instruments. All right, so side B of disc two. If this is another radio studio recording, so similar to disc one, this time in Zurich. Um, here, the recording is very different. So as much as I loved that first LP and it sounded like it was a studio, this one, it still sounds studio, but it also just sounds like it wasn't recorded as well. And so what I mean by that is that there seems to be more treble, like it's more, I don't know, like I guess just treble heavy in sound than what we've heard elsewhere. And the bass and the drums are oddly like, at the same level as Rollins. So it's almost like you have Rollins at a certain level and then collectively bass and drums together that that feel like they're, I don't know, I don't know if like artificially brought up in the uh, in the mix, but um, it, it's weird that they sound just as loud as Sunny is what I would say. Um, for me, despite the fact that this is a radio studio, it's of lower fidelity than the other radio studio performance as I kind of um, got at. It's, it's more of like a tinny kind of sound um, to it where there aren't really like sustains on the drums so much and it just makes the drums seem a little bit harsher than would be than would be ideal um so that, that's what i would say about this radio studio stuff 
The last track on this side is actually a live concert venue, and it's another theater venue, and it's, I would say, of significantly less quality in terms of sound than anything that we've heard thus far. Um, much more of a vintage sound to it. Um, and, and actually the tracks from this particular concert extend into the third LP as well. So fortunately, I would say, because again, it, it just doesn't sound as, as good as what we've heard so far, by track three of the third LP, we shift venue again, and this is a live concert performance in Germany. Um, I say fortunately, except that this may be even lower fidelity than what we've heard otherwise so far. So this comes across, I'll say, more as a radio broadcast in sound. So not a radio studio, but a radio broadcast. Now, I'm sure that they did some restoration on it to make it sound as, as, good, as uh, good as it can, but what we're getting as the discs continue is generally a lower quality of sound, but also, in a really interesting way, we're getting less restrained playing by Sonny Rollins. So I think that... Um, I think what the progression highlights across these four LPs is Sonny's willingness to really blow when he isn't as much under the microscope of a formal studio recording. So independent of the very first track on this, on this entire box set, we started with radio, we moved to like TV and then to radio and then we're getting to like live concert hall kind of thing. And the effect of this as, as these discs progress is frankly that we get a lot more exciting playing and a lot, again, less restraint by uh, by Sonny Rollins. So where we are now is there's only three more sides to cover. There's the, there's the second side of disc three, and then there's all of disc four. But if you'll remember what I said up front is that the last three sides are all um, single track across the entire side recordings. So side B of disc three, and then all of disc four are side length pieces. So the first is Woody and You, which is a Dizzy Gillespie tune. Uh, it's a 16 minute version. In terms of balance, I would say you don't really get much bass here at all. Um, these, I'll say this though, these three tracks, these three, three final tracks, they really have, they're all recorded at the same venue and it really feels like an intimate club. So whereas some of the other live stuff that we've heard elsewhere definitely feels like a large concert hall, um, these are much more intimate clubs. But, you know, again, they're not, they're not that well recorded in terms of balance, in terms of picking up each of the instruments. Um, and, and I would say you get a little bit more audience noise, perhaps in some cases as much audience noise as you're getting bass. Um, so you're not really getting much bass. Um, but like I said, I think that this type of intimate club format is probably what Sonny Rollins got the most energy from. And, and, it, and it shows. It shows in his playing. You can hear it. Um, Rollins sounds fantastic, and I'm talking it both in terms of the quality of his sound as well as the inspiration behind his playing. So even if bass and drums are a little bit lackluster in terms of um, in terms of uh, balance and, and things, and certainly detail, um, Rollins sounds just uh, really fantastic. He sounds really dialed in. All right, so that's a rundown of of how this thing sounds. You know, so I said a lot there, but I think. You know, what should come across is, is sort of like the, the main bullet points is that, well, it varies. Like there is, gosh, there's a whole LP of, of something that, um, that sounds like it's a studio recording. And then you have, and then you have like a lot of other stuff that's kind of varying. And I would say that, um, you know, some of the imperfections of some of the recordings, even the ones that I, those imperfections that I mentioned are in comparison with that first side. You almost want everything to sound as good as that. And yet, at the same time, like I said, there's so much energy with Sonny Rollins in some of these live formats when he's in front of people, uh, as opposed to it being like a stuffy TV or radio recording. And so you just get, you get a little bit of everything. You get the clean and exact sort of nature of him really controlling his tone and everything in these, um, you know, in these more sort of scripted environments. And then these last three sessions in a club, gosh, like he blows for 16, 17 minutes straight where it's just like Sonny Rollins show the entire time. And he sounds absolutely phenomenal. So I, um, as much as you can fault, say, you know, some of the later stuff that, you know, the later disc stuff, it's kind of, you kind of want it too. It just, it really gives you a, um, I think just a more holistic idea of what this tour would have been like. And I don't know if that was the idea in terms of how they uh, structured this four disc set, but that's just how it comes across to me. 
Um, so, so that's all the, if you remember, that's all the first question that I wanted to address was what's, what's, what's the audio quality? And the second question is, is this needed? And I think I'm already getting at that already, that this captures 1959, which is very much a pivot point between Sonny Rollins playing with a larger format and um, not yet going on his bridge sabbatical, but you know, experimenting with these trios that produce such great albums as those ones that I led with, the Contemporary Records one, and Freedom Suite, and, uh, and Village Vanguard. Um, and he's about to pivot again, right? So, so he's about to pivot towards making the bridge, um, and, and obviously that sabbatical. And so this very much was a just a critical time in Sonny Rollins' development. And, and I think that this is just a fascinating sort of snapshot of that tour at that time. Um, so I'm, you know, here's the thing, it's easy to, it's easy to support any LP release or any box set release, um, especially when you get it for, for free, right? Because Resonance sent this to me, which is very nice of them to do. Uh, and it's easy to just say everything's good. Well, everything isn't good. I mean, I think hopefully you were able to determine what, you know, assess what I was saying about audio quality and figure out if that's uh, something that you're gonna enjoy and that's gonna get duplicates, uh, repeated spins. I personally really like the entire, you know, picture of everything that was happening then. Um, and, and I think even just from a historical standpoint, this is a fascinating time period. So I I am a fan of this. I'm a big fan. I definitely know that side uh, sorry disc one and disc four are gonna get the most plays because of that kind of dichotomy right that that clean stuff but then also the the lack of restraint later on and and maybe not so much the middle stuff you know it's hard to take out it's hard to take out a four lp set and say i'm gonna spin all of this today um you kind of have to pick and choose and so in my mind like going forward those are going to be the the discs that are probably going to get the most play at least in my house um, but you know, I'll kind of, uh, I guess, leave it up to uh, to folks out there, especially after Record Store Day, to weigh in on um, on what they think about this release. You know, it's being put out in a quantity of five thousand, which is one of the largest quantities of anything that's being put out for Record Store Day, at least specific to the jazz genre. So it feels to me like folks who want this are going to be able to get it, and yet. You never know with Record Store Day in terms of uh, in, in terms of who's going to uh, gravitate towards this, uh, despite the cost of a four LP set. You know who's going to gravitate to this and uh, and want to grab it, and whether it's going to be difficult. But five thousand otherwise seems like a, a large quantity, and so we'll just have to see whether whether they were um, I don't know distributed to all the stores that needed them, so that all of y'all out there can uh, can determine if it's something that you want to get. So a lot of these tracks are available to preview, I will say, I believe both on YouTube as well as, I think you can just stream them. So I would certainly look that up. And if you're gonna stream anything, I would say a couple of things. I would say that the, some of the best tracks that were recorded in terms of uh, high quality are on, on disc one, there's There Will Be, excuse me, There Will Never Be Another You, Stay As Sweet As You Are, and I've Told Every Little Star. Um, so th those are those are some of the highlights. And then again, track four, excuse me, disc four, the stuff that's really good is uh, But Not For Me, Lady Bird, and then the the, uh, the second half of disc three, which is Woody and You, that I, uh, that's the track that I mentioned. So those are my favorites on this entire thing. And um, I think if you're still on the fence after hearing some of my comments, that's, that's what you should go and, um, and, and preview. So as always, hope this was helpful for anybody who wanted to know what this was, whether they should you know, whether they should uh, justify the, uh, the expense of picking this up. Um, so yeah, that's what I was trying to accomplish. So thanks every everyone for your uh, continued attention. As I can't speak today, it's Friday and uh, I'm getting ready for the weekend. So yeah, I guess I will see you next time and look out for some of those upcoming videos, including my shootout of that tone poet. So thanks everyone. I'll see you next time.